The Denver Broncos could be without Patrick Sertan against the Kansas City Chiefs this weekend. We take a look at depth options behind he and Ronald Darby. If they both miss, then we also take a look and we talk about why the Broncos offense needs to let it fly in the Week 18 preseason finale. And Sarah and I, we also dive into why we are treating this game like a preseason game. Why? Well, you're going to find that out and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke. Joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Make sure you can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format. You can watch us on YouTube. Go ahead and search Lockdown Broncos. Or if you're watching us already, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss out on all the action. And Broncos country thank you so much for making lockdown broncos your first listen of the day every single day sarah my friend here we are just about 48 hours away from kickoff the denver broncos set to host the kansas city chiefs and power field at mile high regular season finale fan appreciation the broncos had announced and uh you know unfortunately as much as it pains us to see the ups and downs of the season part of me is going to miss having a game to cover man and you know every sunday with you here I am too, Cody. I, I do love covering the games and I love watching the games and you love to actually get to see all the stuff. Like for me, you know me, I like to evaluate from the general manager perspective. So for me, it's like watching these games, especially like we're going to talk about later from an evaluation standpoint is so much fun to do. But but yeah, I mean, here we are. We're in the final week of the regular season. It's been a fun season, man. It's been really cool to be on and, and to be here with you and, and with all the, the listeners and viewers and been a good year it's been a really good year and and i feel like man we're just getting started we're about to we're about to really go off as as this off season approaches and i'm i'm excited i think we're gonna have some fun Absolutely. Big things ahead for the Denver Broncos. Big things ahead for Broncos country. Big things in store for us here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. We appreciate you, Broncos country, for staying along this season with the ride. We have you covered all year long, though, so don't forget, even though the season ends, we still have you covered every single day, all year long. All right, sir. Uh, you know, looking at this matchup, I, I think one of the bigger keys going into it, yes, the Broncos don't have much to play for. We talked about the, you know, the prospects of them knocking Kansas City out of the chance to get home field advantage. That would be great. And to get their first win against Kansas City since 2015. But that may be very difficult because the Broncos, they're more than likely going to be going into this game against KC without Ronald Darby, who's dealing with a shoulder injury, and without Patrick Sertan, who's dealing with a calf injury. And this is probably something more along the lines of the Broncos not wanting to put him in harm's way, any of these guys, because they are banged up as is. And when you do play injured, you do have a tendency to maybe put yourself at risk for re-aggravation or you know, even something worse. So I can understand that. But these two guys, unlikely to play. So my question is, who fills the roles at the outside cornerback position if both of the key starters for the Broncos are out against Kansas City? Well, we got, you know, Kyle Fuller still around and, and able to come in and play. And I think you're going to get your money's worth there. I mean, they paid $9.5 million and they didn't trade him at the trade deadline. So you might as well throw him out there. Obviously, Michael Ojemudia coming back yes. as well. Cody, hopefully we get a chance to see him and keep Bryce Callahan in the nickel. And he should be back off the COVID list this yep. week as well. So, man, if that guy, he's found about 100 different ways to miss a game <laughs> in the last couple of years. I feel bad for him because I know he doesn't want to miss games. But, man, that's tough. That's tough. So I do think we're going to get to see those two guys. But obviously, those aren't the only guys missing from the secondary. And, and Kareem Jackson, who is a free agent after this game, Obviously, he can't sign anywhere until March, but he's going to be a free agent this offseason, Cody. And, and clearly, you know, there's a there's a fork in the road here for him. What is what's his replacement got to do in this game? And who is first of all, who's going to be replacing him? Because I know the Broncos have a number of guys at the safety spot. But who do you see replacing him? And how do you see this kind of playing out? You know, I see it kind of being like a group effort, right? And obviously the Broncos, they placed Kareem Jackson on injured reserve, thus ending his season entirely. He's been dealing with neck, shoulder, and back issue all season long, and that's something he'll probably have to get addressed here this offseason. Not sure if rest will do it. I mean, I don't know what kind of options he has there. I'm not a medical expert in that regards there, so I'm not going to speculate. But, you know, for the Broncos in this game, they're getting one guy back there, and that's Caden Stearns. And look, 
Why did the George Payton and the Broncos go out and draft two safeties back to back? Because they're eyeing for the future, right? And Kareem Jackson, even though he came back on that one year, very team friendly deal. Man, he's been so good for the Broncos this season, he and Justin Simmons. That's why we've talked about, like, do the Broncos move on from him after this offseason? Because he has played really well. He can still play at a high level. Do you want to risk out on losing that? And it, Then again, it's that question. Do you want to go younger? Do you believe that the guy behind him can do it? Well, now we're going to get a little bit more of an opportunity because in this game, Sarah, barring anything, you know, unforeseen here. Caden Stearns is off the COVID list. He, he should be ready to go in this game. Hopefully, COVID doesn't impact the Broncos anymore. I mean, that's been something we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, unfortunately. But they'll get their first look at Caden Stearns, really in that Kareem Jackson role. Not necessarily their first look. I mean, they've seen it in games where Kareem has had to come out to go through the concussion protocol evaluation against the Steelers. We saw that. We've seen him fill in many times. But this is the actual start alongside Justin Simmons, who's the stable part that you're going to see for the next three to four years in the organization. So the Broncos getting maybe a little bit of a sneak peek at Maybe a starting safety duo in the NFL next year. And we've seen, you know, what Caden Stearns can do from being used as a guy who can blitz, play against the run, the ability for him to cover. It's been impressive this season. This is going to be a good test for him to start alongside Justin Simmons. And it could be what we see week one next season. I think so, too. I really do. I feel like this could be your starting duo at the safety position. And we've been kind of talking about that since the draft, like which one of those two guys, Jamar Johnson or Caden Stearns, could be that potential pairing with Justin Simmons for the future. And I love, from just the evaluation standpoint, getting a chance to watch these two guys work in tandem because obviously Kareem Jackson, he's an elite athlete. He plays in the NFL. But I mean, in terms of just pure athleticism and speed and an explosiveness and those physical traits, it doesn't get much better or freakier than Justin Simmons and Caden Stearns in one defensive backfield. So unfortunately, we won't be able to see those two guys along with Patrick Sertan and Ronald Darby, but we do get to see those two guys out on the field together. That's a lot of explosiveness at the safety position, a lot of speed, plus you factor in the speed at the linebacker position right in front of those guys. I'm really, really interested to see how those two levels do against Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs offensive attack. We've seen a number of breakdowns in coverage against the Chiefs, and understandably so. I mean, those guys, they have a lot of different ways they find ways to get open. But I'm excited to see that kind of duo with that athleticism, that speed, that kind of explosiveness go up against this Kansas City offensive attack. Yeah, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire could make his return in this game. He's been dealing with a shoulder collarbone issue the last couple of weeks that's held him out of action. If not, you'll see Darrell Williams, Derek Gore getting some carries. Obviously, McKinnon for them as well. I mean, they have a lot of athletes, and it'll be a big test. The Broncos, though, should get be, should be getting Baron Browning back. They'll have Jonas Griffith, and you know we'll see if Kenny Young is available to play as well. So the Broncos getting a lot of guys back on the defense side of the ball that missed last week. That's going to be good for them. Uh, but, you know, coming up here in just a moment, Sarah, you and I are going to get into the conversation with Broncos coach as to why, look, hey, here in week 18, the Broncos offense, they just need to let it fly. We talk about what we're looking forward to on the offensive side of the ball for the Broncos, some of the questions that we have in this matchup against the Chiefs coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor. Today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, that's our good friends over there at Bilt Bar. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today. Each bar contains 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and over 4 grams of sugar. And the really cool thing about that is you don't expect that out of something that's containing 100% milk chocolate. The bars are soft and they're easy to chew. They have nine amazing, delicious flavors, including the occasional limited time flavors that you can check out throughout the month at Built.com. Find a flavor that's good for you, your wife, your family, whichever flavors you like. You can even get a mixed box sent your way if you want to try all the flavors at Built.com. Once again, I mentioned it's the healthiest protein bar on the market. The bars give you the extra fuel that you need. Like I mentioned, 17 grams of protein. And you can get a box of Built Bar today by going to Built.com and go to checkout. When you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCK15. That's going to get you 15% off your next order. Once again, promo code LOCK15 gets you 15% off at built.com. And the other sponsor of today's episode of the show, it's our good friends over there at the Get Upside app. And ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about gas prices, they're always rising, they're falling. But what if I were to tell you you never have to pay full price at the gas pump ever again? Well, the Get Upside app is where you need to go today in the Google Play Store or your app store on your Apple phone, whatever you utilize. And you can find a way to make 25 cents per gallon cash back every single time that you fill up your tank with the Get Upside app. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, 25 cents per gallon cash back every time you fill up using the Get Upside app. And if you join today and you sign up, use promo code TOUCHDOWN, they're going to give you an additional 25 cents per gallon on top of that. So you have a chance to make 50 cents per gallon cash back 
on your first tank fill up here today with the get ups that happen, depending on how much you drive. Some drivers are making up to $200 to $300 a month in cash back alone utilizing the get upside app today. Promo code touchdown. Once again, you can use that additional 50% cash back anytime that you fill up on your tank here with the get upside app today. They make it really easy for you to cash out as well. You can connect your bank account, PayPal, or you can even connect to different e brand gift card sites like Amazon and other brands. They have you covered with the get upside app today. Once again, promo code touchdown gets you an additional 25 cents per gallon cash back today. All right, Sarah, continuing on with today's episode, Locked on Broncos. We're just getting into the conversation point about the Broncos offense. And really, look, here in week 18, Broncos have nothing really to play for. They have nothing really to lose here. But I think it would be ideal for the offense to go out on a high note, especially against the Kansas City Chiefs here in the, you know, in the week 18 regular season finale. Will the Broncos offense, so looking at it, right, it's going to be Drew Locke who's going to get the start. The offense line, no Dalton Reisner. He's on injured reserve. He's done. So Natani Muti will get the start there. Broncos getting some guys back, though. They had Cortland Sutton last week, but Jerry Judy's going to be back. Tim Patrick's going to be back. And, and I feel like in this matchup in particular, we have a chance to really see those guys go off. Now, will the Broncos get a much-needed boost with those guys returning, or is the Kansas City Chiefs defense going to be something you have to worry about? I think they're going to get a much, much-needed boost, Cody. I really do. And I'm, I am I know that we've had kind of – we've gone up and down this roller coaster with Drew Locke all season. And yeah. I went on record at one point as saying, like, I feel like Brett Rippon should be the backup if Drew's going to come in and be reckless with the ball, yada, yada. But we have seen – what he can do when he's the guy in charge of, you know, leading the week of practice at the quarterback position, taking all the reps. He's done really well these last two weeks, in my opinion. And I can't wait to see. I'm one of those people that can't wait to see, even if it's just one game, what can Drew Locke do with a full complement of offensive skill players? And of course, we don't have KJ Hamler, but everyone else that we've been excited about and on the offensive side of the ball, barring anything unforeseen, like you said in segment one, Barring anything unforeseen, we're going to get to see Drew Locke with a full complement of offensive playmakers. That, frankly, that's been really rare. I mean, I mean, last season it was the Pittsburgh Steelers game for just a brief bit before Drew got hurt himself, right? And this season, obviously, the Las Vegas Raiders game was really the only time that we've gotten to see Drew Locke with all of these receivers that we all got so excited about. Remember, right after the 2020 draft. We're like, man, Jerry, Judy, KJ Hamler, Corlin Sutton, Tim Pat. I mean, all these players, no offense. We never really got to see Drew Locke with those guys ever. So I feel like it's going to be a huge boost for him to be able to have all of those playmakers. And I can't, I, frankly, Cody, I can't wait to see how that's going to go. And I understand like Pat Schumer is kind of a, a limiter of the offense right now. But like you said, it's time to let it fly. So, so what is it that you want to see, Cody, from the offense in this final game of the season, because obviously it means nothing in terms of the standings, but like we've been talking about evaluation, this is an opportunity to evaluate. What do you want to see that you can evaluate after the game? I, you know, I just want to see an offense that's having fun, right? You know, the one thing you can see when watching these players, it, they've never really had it. And, and like, I think the Cowboys game might be the one anomaly where the offensive players, they look like they were actually having fun. And that's one thing, too, is like as a football player, you want to go out there, you want to produce, but you want to have fun doing it as well. The defense has had plenty of fun so far this season. But the offense, they've had moments where it's just like nobody nobody looks thrilled, right? And, and it's not necessarily the player's fault. I think that based on the amount of film breakdowns Tim Jenkins has done, some of the concepts, I mean, we get the press conference answers from Pat Shermer every single week, and he doesn't really give us much. I mean, his answers are really vague. And once again, we got that. Uh, you know, the other day, I, I just want to see this offense come out, have fun, let it rip, throw it down the field, you know, test every little, you know, blade of grass because you have Jerry Judy, you have Tim Patrick, you have Cortland, but you also have Albert O and Noah Fant. And we got to see Noah Fant more utilized last week, which is a shame that really the, the one game before the regular season finale, he has the game where he is actually used. And I think a lot of that is based on Drew going to him. Now, here's the deal. I think Broncos country is looking at, well, yeah, this is the last game for Drew Locke in a Broncos uniform. No, it's not. Drew Locke is going to be on the roster next season for the organization. And it goes back to George Payton. The Broncos received numerous trade calls in the offseason about Drew Locke. Denver didn't want to trade him away. George Payton wanted the front office, wanted to see Drew Locke this season. It was the coaching staff that wanted to see Teddy Bridgewater. That's been well documented, and he's still under contract. So George Payton is probably not going to offset a guy like Drew Locke. He's going to probably be on the roster, probably going to be the backup next season, depending on what they decide to do 
depending on free agency, who they can get. I just want to see Drew Locke come out there, throw it to these guys, have fun. But more importantly, I, I want to see the Broncos be able to run the ball, sir. So, you know, my biggest question to you, look, it's Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. I want to see Javante get to 1K this season. Now, I think the last yeah. couple of weeks, unfortunately, the Broncos rushing success has been very limited. We may not see that. But, man, I tell you what, I want to see the Broncos offense, the run game. I want to see him go out to bang. I do too. It's and it is attainable. I mean, 145 yards would put Javante over a thousand. I don't know the exact number for Melvin Gordon, but it would be great to see just a dominant rushing attack. And in one of the good answers I felt from Pat Shermer in his press conference is like, you know, you want to establish a sound running game, but that can over the course of the game can kind of take away from your opportunity to score points because when you're trying to establish the run, obviously you're taking a lot of time off the clock. And I agree with that. I think that's understandable. But at the same time, I want to see, you know, if this is the last, this is the last game of the season. I want to see Javante Williams, like you said, go out with a bang. We want to get one last piece for his highlight reel. And for Melvin Gordon, this is an opportunity to prove like, hey, maybe you guys should bring me back. I don't know what the price tag is going to be on Melvin Gordon, but I think from just the just the perception of him and and the process of signing him just like based on the principle of the move i feel like a lot of fans have disliked gordon for really no good reason yeah. um I, I the fumbles are, are a decent enough reason to kind of be frustrated with him but aside from those fumbles man he's been a really good three down back so you do have an opportunity in this game against the kansas city chiefs i'm not saying that i i feel like the broncos are going to come out there and just absolutely you know clean their clocks but they do, they are healthy on that side of the ball the, for the most part, right? On the offensive line, you're missing Reisner. But other than that, everybody else, it's a full complement of players. Your running game should be able to excel. That's what Natani Muti is really good at, run blocking. And, and I feel like that's something that the Broncos have to emphasize in this game. That's going to help Drew Locke have success. That's going to help the tight ends have success. Everything is going to flow through this running game. So establishing it early, I think, is critical. Well, coming up here in just a moment, Broncos country, Sarah and I, we're going to tell you why we're treating Week 18 like a preseason game. What are they thinking, preseason, this late in the season? We'll tell you why coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the other sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. That's our good friends over there at BetOnline. And BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. And BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today. And you can receive your 50% welcome bonus in your first deposit when you use promo code locked on that's one word locked on to get started from football basketball boxing hockey and ufc right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022 bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts all right, Sarah, as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, once again, just want to say we love you, Broncos country. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, whether you watch us here on YouTube or whether you listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform where you can subscribe and you can get us on the go free every single day. When you wake up in the morning, turn on Lockdown Broncos as you go to work, as you work out, as you make breakfast, whatever it may be. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day every single day to stay informed on the best coverage, all things Denver Broncos related, Sarah. My friend, this is the fourth quarter of what is the final regular season week here of the show here. Very bittersweet, my friend. But, you know, we were talking about this. We want to evaluate this Week 18 game kind of like a preseason game. And I know Broncos are going to be like, what the heck are these guys talking about? Well, you know, it goes into these questions about next year, right? We like to flash forward a little bit. Now, Sarah, I want to ask you, uh, you know, offensively, defensively, which players do you feel like can impress going into the 2022 offseason? Because ideally, some of these guys are treating this like an audition to be back. Some of them are auditioning for larger roles next season in this game in particular. I think offensively, it's got to start with Drew Locke, right? I mean, he, he's got the relief opportunity against the Bengals, and now he's stringing together. This will be his third straight start. So stringing together three straight starts. And by the way, he's on a two-game streak of not turning the ball over. So yep. I know that's, that is a big deal for Drew. And so coming into this game, I mean, how huge would it be for him to just end this season on a bang? I mean, the Chiefs aren't resting anybody. They're, they're, not, they're not trying to lose this game or they're not trying to help the Broncos at all. They're not trying to rest starters for the playoffs. They're trying to get the number one seed in the AFC. So for Drew Locke to go out there and play really well in this game, I think would be extremely meaningful for the Denver Broncos and for him and for just, just a lot of things in general. You put some good stuff on tape in this game, and I feel like there's something at stake potentially for the future. You might make the Broncos think a little bit, 
when it comes to, I don't know, I, I, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just saying Drew Locke has an opportunity in this game to play well and, and do some nice things and really impress. And I think defensively, for me, Cody, it starts with the inside linebackers. And, and if you if you can see another strong game from those two guys, I feel like you can kind of confidently move into the 2022 offseason feeling really good about where you're at at that position with Justin Cernata's depth. And then you've got Micah Kaiser is also a restricted free agent this offseason. So that's four backers that you already have under contract for a reasonable price going into next year. So I want to see Jonas Griffith and Baron Browning come out in this game and play really nicely. I want to know what you think of those picks, and I want to know who you're really keeping your eyes on in this game in terms of offense, defense, who's got a chance to impress. Well, you know, I'm going to stick on the offense side of the ball. I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon here. And like you said, this is an audition for him. I think this season he's been very consistent. He's probably been the most uh, consistent runner in a sense, right? Javante consistently breaks off big runs, hard to tackle. But when the Broncos need like a big gashing play, it's consistently, I think, been Melvin Gordon. And I think that's a point. And, you know, Broncos country wants to turn it into a war against one of the other running backs. Shouldn't be. Love both of them. And I think both have been pretty good. So I think for Melvin, an audition, he wants to be back. Look, he was just saying that he believes that this is a playoff, a Super Bowl roster. And unfortunately, they fell short. And I don't know why he's getting a lot of outreach for that. I think the Broncos do have a really good uh, playoff roster here unfortunately it didn't make it this season and that's a whole another story we'll talk about here this offseason defense i'm gonna go with nate harrison who's been playing the nickel now yesterday i had a chance to ask ed donatello a question about guys like michael ojamudia nate harrison and one of the questions you know what are the what can they do in this game obviously if patrick sertan ronald darby don't play what can these guys do to maybe amplify their prospects going into the next season? And Donatel was very upfront. He said, you know, OJ, unfortunately, you know, hasn't played much this season due to the injury, but he's been learning a lot from those veteran guys in that room, and he thinks it's going to benefit him when he does get on the field. He said Nate Harrison's done a really good job filling in for us inside the nickel and the dime. He's gotten a lot of playing time, and we, we're going to rely a lot on him. So I, I want to see a little bit more out of him. I, I've been very impressed with him so far this season. He could be one of those mainstay guys. And look, if he performs really, really well, uh, maybe the Broncos do move on from Bryce Callahan, which I, you know, I wouldn't move on for Bryce. Bryce personally, I would keep him, but you want to have good depth at those positions. And I think George Payton has always believed in doubling up. As for your picks, I think those are spot on. I think for Drew, yeah, it has a great opportunity for him. The organization doesn't just necessarily have to give up on him, and I think that's exactly where George Payton is at. Doesn't want to give up on him and believes that maybe he could be a backup guy. Maybe f down the road, maybe he could be the guy. Who knows? We don't know at this point, Broncos country. We don't get pissed at us for talking about it, right? There's always an option, option A, option B. Who knows? We're just trying to spitball everything here. And for linebackers, yeah, spot on. I mean, it, it makes the Broncos' decisions maybe – that they have to make with guys like Alexander Johnson, Josie Jewell, a little bit more solidified. So something to see there. But, you know, Sarah, I want to ask you a question. Looking at some of these positions, guys that have filled in due to injury, can you see maybe anybody, if they play really well in this game, potentially stealing a job next season, particularly on the offensive line? We talk about inside linebackers. We even talked about Caden Stearns a little bit earlier. But I want your final thoughts here on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Yeah, I can't help but wonder if Natani Muti and Quinn Miners are both playing for starting roles to open the 2022 season. And I know that that, like a lot of people in Broncos country, we love Dalton Reisner. He's he's an amazing dude, and he's I, I think he's a really good football player. At the same time, I think you got to really critically evaluate his progression as a player. We've talked about potentially Pat Schirmer's yeah. offense, maybe holding some of these guys back. And I think that that does kind of hold some weight here. So I'm not saying definitively, yeah, this, this game is going to prove once and for all, but I do think on the other side with Quinn Miners, I think with Graham Glasgow, he's got his contract, you know, situation at a point where the dead money is in such a, a place where the Broncos might consider, you know, moving on after this season, if they, you know, if they want to go after some other guys in free agency, maybe some pass rushers, maybe they, uh, maybe they make a trade for a quarterback. I don't know. I don't think anybody's really talked about that option yet, Cody, but trading for a quarterback could be on the table for the Broncos. But uh, um, all, all kidding aside, I do think Quinn Miners has a chance to be a, a solidified 2022 starter for the Broncos. If he can close this season well, Natani Muti on the left side, maybe not so much, but I do think that Quinn Miners can kind of solidify that starting position after this season. I'm interested to know if you think there's anybody defensively, Cody, that you think could be solidifying, maybe stealing somebody's job coming out in this game. 
kind of alluded to it a little bit with Nate Harrison, maybe just watching his performance, depending on what the Broncos want to do with Bryce there. But, you know, ideally, I'd say Caden Stearns, we talked about him earlier, with Kareem Jackson not playing this, the perfect chance to audition, it's the perfect chance for George Payton, the GM who brought Caden Stearns into the fray here for this Broncos team, saying, hey, you know what? We're going to see what the future is going to look like with these two guys. He's young. He has promise. He has upside. He can continue to develop. He's going to have a whole offseason under his belt to prepare as a starter. That could benefit him a long, long ways, my friend. So I'm going to look at a, you know, a guy like Caden Stearns in this game. Uh, it, who knows? This is going to be an offseason. It's going to be riddled with change, Sarah. And I know Broncos country, they're excited for change. They're scared of change because it brings a, an unknown uncertainty about the future of the organization. But we're going to find out. A lot of changes coming for the Broncos. And, and we'll see, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, obviously, after Saturday, the Broncos play. Could they make any coaching staff changes on sa on Sunday when they're not playing? Or are they going to wait for Monday? We'll have to wait and see here, Broncos country. But once again, that'll do it for today's episode. Lockdown Broncos here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. Well, Sarah Bedger, myself, we have you covered on Saturday with the Lockdown Broncos post game of work. Can the Broncos play spoils to the Kansas City Chiefs? Can they do the things that we're hoping? to see here on Saturday primetime action on ESPN. It's going to be an early primetime game for you guys to be able to see 2.15 p.m. Mountain time. Can't wait to break it down with you, Sarah. And uh, look, Broncos Country Mile High Salute. Appreciate you. We'll see you for the post-game report. And change is coming for the Denver Broncos.